Okay. You were homeschooled. Yeah. Basically, your entire um, a high school. High school. Yeah. Just high school. Yeah, just high school. I read where you got bullied. Did you get yeah. homeschooled because you got bullied and it was the safe space for you to be at home? Or what What caused that? Uh, I got homeschooled because I was on that Nickelodeon show okay. and because it was too hard to go, go to school, juggle. Yeah, home. yeah. Um, but, uh, but you know, I mean, I, I'm never one to back down from a fight. So if someone's bullying me, I'm not going to let them bully me out of submission. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was mainly just because I was working so much as an actor. It just made more sense. Yeah. I read that you got jumped. Do you think yeah. it has something to do with you being on that Nickelodeon show? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it very much did. We were. But it took five, though. It did take five. That. Like, you were swinging on them. It took Megan, five. you were swinging on Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. no, because when I realized it was all coming from my face, I was like, oh, no, we're not going to do that. So I actually laid down on the ground. And back then, that's when the big clunker shoes yeah. were really popular. I started kicking people in the gut. Anybody who came near me, I just spin around kicking them in the gut. <laughs> and, um, and it's so funny because I, I ran into this girl some, some years later and she had told a mutual friend of ours that she had just beat me up. And I was like, no, you and four other hookers beat me up. <laughs> what is you saying right now? Um, and it's crazy because after that fight happened, I went looking for that girl all around town because I was like, I just want to fight just you. And, what? and the Lord told me not to do it. And I did it and I found some of her friends and then some guys came and then I had some of my guys come and the next thing you know, people have shanks and all kinds of things going out and we have a huge brawl inside of uh, Jerry's Deli and I broke the back of my nail back breaking a chair on someone's back who was choking my friend. And by the time we got out to the parking lot, somebody pulled up on a motorcycle with uh, a gun and threatened to shoot us all and we all went running like cockroaches and then I was in the bushes praying and I was like Lord I didn't listen and this wasn't right and now everybody else's life is in danger and um, after that I, the, that particular guy actually ended up um, getting into a situation where someone uh, shot him but didn't kill him but, but hurt him and I found out where he was at because after that I was scared for my life for like two weeks I went to his hospital room and said look let's just squash the beef blah say blah and about a year later, I'm on a TV show doing a reoccurring role, and he's one of the writers on the show, and we've been friends ever since. Wow. Yeah. Man, you about that life growing up? I mean, I'm, I'm looking a, at I'm you. I'm a KU country girl, but I've been around a lot of crazy. I'm yeah. looking at your petite self, and right. you know, you're like, okay, you on TV. You're right. like, I ain't going to mess up my face. I ain't going to mess up my nails. And you were like, body, body. Because I just felt like I just couldn't believe that somebody had like taken it upon themselves to come into my space. And, and the reason that the girls did it is because they were like, oh, aren't you that one girl from that TV show? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, oh, you think you all that? And I was like, yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, you, you the one who said that. You think I'm all that. And then they was like, come outside. I was like, no, I'm not going outside. And then that became them jumping me. So I, I just couldn't let it be. But now I know better because it ain't worth it. Right. If someone had actually gotten hurt, you know, I don't think I could live that down. So I read that a teacher, she did something. She did. Yeah. Tear your homework up. She misplaced your homework. Uh, which teacher? Uh, <laughs> Because where I grew up in Santa Clarita, like I said, there was a lot of racism. Right, so I right. had trouble with at least my, my fifth grade teacher and my sixth grade teacher. Okay. Um, my fifth grade teacher actually slapped me on the back. Uh, my mom got her suspended. Um, and then my sixth grade teacher just really picked on me. It's like if I wore a lip gloss, she'd take my lip gloss, but she let the other little girls who didn't have the same complexion as me wear lip gloss. Oh, okay. She'd take my things and put them in the June box. And then uh, in this particular instance, um, my dad had given me these coins and because my dad was LAPD and my mom and my dad weren't together, we didn't always see our dad that often at that time. So anytime he gave me a collection of coins, it was like a really big deal to me. And the teacher took them and put them in the June box. So I was supposed to get them back in June. And another little girl was like, oh, those are mine. And I was like, no, those aren't. And she was like, yes, they are. And the teacher was like, stop lying, Megan. And I was like, why do I have to be lying? And it was just kind of always that situation. Uh, but the girl gave him back like three years later and apologized. I didn't punch her. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you, you, got, you got some anger issues. Now, hopefully you, you... I did not punch her. But you I thought did. about it. At that time, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not aggressive in that way. I'm one of those people who 
if you continue to mess with me and you get me to a certain point, then I'm upset that you got me to that point because it takes so much for me. I'm so like, it ain't that serious. So let me get this straight. The June box is something. If the teacher takes something from you in September, October, November, yep. they place it in this June box. And yep. at the end of the year, when school is over, you get to get it back. Yes. Yes. So she took your coins that your father had given you. Obviously, uh -huh. your mom, your mom and dad's not together, so it holds a little bit more sentimental value a to you because more. he's not around every single day. Yeah, she places it in that. Yep. And then, and then she didn't keep no records, or maybe she did, but she gave them to another. I kid. stole it back. You I think you thought if I knew where that girl lived, maybe, maybe. <laughs> you, <laughs> you said in Santa Clarita, where you grew up at, yeah. a lot of times you were the only. Black, black child. Baby. Yeah. And there was so obviously if you're the only black child in that area, probably you're going to be one of a handful of in that high school. So did yeah. you, you did you deal with a lot of racism in high school or with just isolated incidents? Um, well, definitely in elementary school quite a bit. Um, and then in junior high, uh, a little bit. That's around when when kids started busting in, right. uh, like black kids started busting in. But then it was kind of like in the beginning, it was like the black kids was like, why you talk like that? And I'm like, talk like what? They're like, like you white. I'm like, I don't talk like I'm white. They're like, yes, you do. I'm like, how? So right. anyways, as I sound so crazy right now, my voice going high. But anyway, um, so I think for me, I almost felt like I didn't really fit in anywhere right. kind of growing up, which I think actually worked to my benefit because then I just kind of learned how to be authentically myself and unapologetically in that, but also how to be a chameleon and get along with anyone and go in any space and be comfortable. How old were you in the role in Friday? 13. 13. Yeah. And, you know, you had the scene, the, the ice cream truck with big, big perm. I mean, oh, big yeah. worm. Yeah. And, and so Mess. what was it like? Because, you know, Chris Tucker, Ice Cube, Faison, John yeah. Witherspoon, Bernie Mac. Yeah. Were you on the set with uh, uh, um, were you on the set with any of those guys other than Tucker, Chris Tucker and Ice Cube? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's crazy is is at that time, Michael Clark Duncan was um, Tiny Lester stand in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, F. Gary Gray was 25 years old, first movie. And basically for that those two scenes that i had in the movie i was probably on set for almost three weeks waiting to shoot my scenes wow and so i spent a lot of time with everybody um but one thing i'll never forget is a uh, tiny i was eating a tuna sandwich and he said can i have one i said yeah 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 so i went and i made him one and i came back and then michael was like well where's mine and i was like well you didn't ask for one he was like yeah but you didn't ask me if i wanted one and i was like oh okay <laughs> and then he said to me he said just remember as you go along in your career make sure you treat every single person on set the same exact way everybody has a role and everybody has a job right. and everybody is important and i was like right and that stuck with me so i always did that and i've always um done that and then it was really cool to do deads with michael clark duncan when i was 22 all those years later and um yeah, he, he was a wonderful person. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.